In this lesson, we will use reference triangles to determine exact trig function values given theta is equal to 11 fourths pi radians. The first step is to sketch the angle in standard position to determine the reference triangle. Again, the angle theta is 11 fourths pi radians. So we begin along the positive x-axis and then rotate counterclockwise 11 fourths pi radians. Two pi radians is one complete rotation and two pi radians is equal to eight fourths pi radians. So it'll be helpful to write 11 fourths pi radians as eight fourths pi radians plus three fourths pi radians. So we'll make one complete rotation in the counterclockwise direction, which would be again two pi radians or eight fourths pi radians, and then we'll count by one fourth pi radians. Remember, one fourth pi radians is equal to 45 degrees. So we have eight fourths pi radians, nine fourths pi radians, 10 fourths pi radians, and then 11 fourths pi radians. So this is the terminal side of 11 fourths pi radians. The reference angle is the angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis, which is pi over four radians or one fourth pi radians. Let's go ahead and label that here. And now we pick a point on the terminal side, let's say here, and sketch the reference triangle by drawing a segment perpendicular to the x-axis, which would be here. So now we have the reference triangle, which we can use to determine all six trig function values. Notice how this is a 45, 45, 90 reference triangle, and therefore we can label the two legs one and the hypotenuse square root two. However, because we're in the second quadrant where x is negative, the leg along the x-axis is going to be negative one, not positive one. The opposite leg will be positive one, and the hypotenuse is always positive, which is square root two. And now we use this red reference triangle to determine all six trig function values. And since sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, sine 11 fourths pi radians is equal to one divided by square root two. Let's also rationalize the denominator, which may or may not be required. To rationalize the denominator, we multiply the numerator and denominator by square root two. Multiplying, we have square root two divided by two. The cosine function value is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Going back to the reference triangle, the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse is negative one divided by square root two. Again, this is the exact value. Let's go ahead and show the rationalization of the denominator, which gives us negative square root two divided by two. Tangent 11 fourths pi radians is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side which gives us one divided by negative one, and one divided by negative one, of course, is just negative one. Next, we have the secant function value, which is equal to the reciprocal of the cosine function value, or the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side. So notice how the cosine function value is negative one divided by square root two. The reciprocal of this is just negative square root two over one, or just negative square root two or using the reference triangle, the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side is square root two divided by negative one, which again is negative square root two. The cosecant function value is equal to the reciprocal of the sine function value. The reciprocal of one divided by square root two is square root two divided by one, or just square root two. Or using the reference triangle, the ratio of the hypotenuse to the opposite side is square root two divided by one, which again is square root two. And then finally, the cotangent function value is equal to the reciprocal of the tangent function value. The reciprocal of negative one is still just negative one, or using the reference triangle, the cotangent function value is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the opposite side, which is negative one divided by one, which is negative one. I hope you found this helpful.